Our second place winner is Caleb Dojan, eighth grader, Sovereign Acres Homeschool.
They base the success of their American experiment on the ability of their posterity to heed the simple message of the Tenth Amendment, the vital philosophy of limited government. With English tyranny and revolutionary upheaval in France playing out before their very eyes, our founders understood the importance of limited government based on the Judeo-Christian doctrines of the depravity of man and the sovereignty of God. If man is inherently sinful, he cannot be trusted with totalitarianism. Rather, it is vital that checks and balances be placed to ensure that freedom be maintained. Furthermore, if God is sovereign, government must remain within the, the divine jurisdiction given her as vice regent of an all-powerful God. No government should have complete and total sovereign power on earth. A people that allowed such usurpation would, therefore, suffer from both the tyrant and from God. Unfortunately, rejecting our forefathers' wisdom has led to disastrous consequences. As Francis Schaeffer correctly observed, the basis of the American Revolution, which placed God above government, has virtually disappeared. Now, the United States federal government has continually taken over the very power that the original government did its best to curtail, limit, and resist. America is now confronted with two divergent paths. Will she choose to adhere to the principles of limited government or to ignore history and follow the precedent of failed socialist regimes? In America 2025, will I have the freedom to educate my own children without government intrusion? With the ever increasing threat of nationalized health care, will my parents be able to obtain quality medical services? The decision lies in the hands of my generation. The choice is clear before us. Continu to continue to allow unchecked centralization of the federal government will only send us to the same rooms as Soviet Russia and Nazi Germany. The boundaries of the Tenth Amendment have paved the path to the freedoms we enjoy today. As Americans, if we continue to enable tyranny, we overlook the original intent of the Tenth Amendment, the vital rule of limited government, and the dire effect socialism will have on the generations to come. Will we learn from history? Our second place winner is Ellen Hughes, a senior at Alec Elizabeth High School. Her essay is titled, A Personal Examination of the Ninth Amendment. Come ahead, Ellen, and read your essay. Good evening. The right of citizens of the United States to vote shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or any state on account of sex. The efforts of suffragists, politicians, and citizens who feverishly campaigned with patriotic devotion across America for women's suffrage were realized in the passage of the 19th Amendment. In becoming the supreme law of the land as of August 18, 1920, just before the birth of my grandmothers, the fabulous repercussions of this legislation have not only guaranteed the unprecedented right of a woman to cast a ballot, but also to pave the way for women to become active, equal citizens of the United States of America than they are today, a privilege I am proud to celebrate and exercise. In 2010, after the midterm elections, the GOP coined that year the Year of the Woman to commemorate the sheer number of women who ran for office and became elected. This election year is no different. It is encouraging to know that we are becoming a nation with more and more women in pivotal roles. President Reagan was the first ever to appoint a female Supreme Court Justice, Sandra Day O'Connor. While women are still considered a minority group in elections, they are quickly becoming some of the most politically aware and decisive forces in the nation. This is significant in that, as a young woman, I have confidence that my concerns and values will be voiced. My mother, as she likes to say, was pre-Title IX. Title IX was a public education law signed into action by President Nixon, which promised equality for boys and girls of all ages in school. This is particularly applicable to me as I participate in numerous school-affiliated sports like soccer and am involved in National Honor Society where my mother was not able to. Amendment 19's stance on gender equality was one of those that have transferred its authority to civil rights, um, such as those demonstrated in Title IX. In addition to creating impartiality between males and females, it has far-reaching effects in other forms of legislation. Title IX and the 19th Amendment directly impacts my life by giving me equal opportunities in school so that I may be just as competitive as my menial peers and vice versa. It is understood that the 19th Amendment has become the foundation for gender-specific civil liberties. The Equal Pay Act is, a, is among perhaps some of the most prominent legislation influenced by the 19th Amendment. In eight years, should I become a licensed pediatrician, 
along with financial independence. I hope that the inconsistency seen in equal pay for equal work will be resolved. This expectation of mine is rooted in the American belief of hard work ethic and perseverance. These both should be blind to gender. Many women overseas cannot practice the same basic rights as American women. This reinforces the importance of protecting women's rights in all aspects of society. The 19th Amendment has safeguarded American freedoms of citizens outside the umbrella of suffrage, extending to both minorities and majorities alike. The remaining legacy of the 19th Amendment will be determined by women committing themselves to being active citizens for a better America, and I am proud to say that I am one of those women. season is from Elizabeth High School, obviously, and the award goes to Riley Ritzinger. Please come forward and meet the The 26th Amendment has changed the lives of millions of young people throughout the United States of America and abroad. The amendment has altered and not only in my life, but countless others as well. The 26th Amendment of the United States Constitution puts forth changes of the voting laws in the United States. This amendment was uh, presented during the horrors of World War II, or the Vietnam War era, when people became distraught that young men of 18 could be sent to war through a draft, but they could not vote for the leaders that controlled the very war that they were fighting. Also a hopeful future servicemen myself, I can say that this ideal appeals to me and all others in my situation. Unfortunately, many of these new voters would register as Democrats who support the end of the war. This trend has continued even today. Many young voters automatically register as Democrats because this is what is viewed as cool or hit. However, many of these young people do not research how each party matches their views before registering. This revision of law may very well have determined the outcome of many an election. This not only affects citizens of the United States, but of any country in the world. The United States is unquestionably one of the foremost superpowers of the world. Thus, the decisions made by the leaders of the U.S. will often affect all of the countries. By lowering voting age, my life has been affected by the decisions made of these young people. There are varying opinions as to whether this amendment has had a good or bad effect on America. In many cases, the law has proved counterintuitive for the Republican cause. Take this past election, for example. Young people aged 18 to 29 represented about 19% of the voting population, and 16% of these new voters cast their ballot in favor of Obama. This is just a recent example of a decade old, of a decades old dilemma for the Republican cause. This amendment has provided me with the ability to make a difference in my surroundings, which is somewhat or something that many teens find hard to achieve. A teen is growing up, they are continuously told through actions, implications, and being told by parents and teachers that they have no actual rights in the public eye. Until a teen turns 18, they have no say in society. After becoming an adult, a young person finally has a say in public affairs. Voting is a major part of that freedom. The 26th Amendment will provide me with many opportunities that would not have been presented to me even 45 years ago. It is often said that even one vote can make a difference. I am eager to make my mark on tomorrow's election. Part of this eagerness lies at the base of my very being. I am raised in a very politically active family that, is encouraged to, that has encouraged the creation of individual, individual belief systems and, be, and to be politically active. Contrary to most teens, I do not depend on my parents to tell me how I should vote, and I do not just go with the flow and vote with vote for who is cool. I have my own ideas and that I would like to translate into votes. So the essay scholarship is as a tribute to Mary Rathbun. Mary was born in New Jersey and is a second generation American. She was instilled with the concept that education and ethics were paramount in one's life. There was also the notion that whatever path you choose in life, 
you need to prepare and then do your best every day. After a long corporate career in the Northeast, she happily moved to Colorado and decided to pursue a new career in her adopted state. Mary brought many skills and a commitment to serving clients in the best possible fashion. Her commitment and dedication to serving her community and clients carried over to a more direct involvement in Elder County in the town of Sydney. Feeling a need to involve herself in the community, Mary became an ECRW member and was involved in many of their activities, one of which was the annual essay contest sponsored by the ECRW. After Mary's untimely passing in 2010, our family decided to honor her memory annually in a way that exemplified her passionate approach to improving oneself as she did. Taking the lessons of childhood to heart, she continued her education as she entered each new phase of her career, recognizing the importance of lifelong learning. Therefore, our family felt that it was appropriate to establish a trust in partial support of the essay contest. This trust provides an annual scholarship to the high school or equivalent winner of this contest. The subject of the contest will vary each year and will be chosen by the ECRW and reviewed by the scholarship trustees. It will focus on the basic tenets upon which our country was founded. As Mary would have wished, the subject will always be nonpartisan and chosen to foster substantive thinking about the American way as defined by our system of government. It would be Mary's hope that the scholarship would help to open doors to future possibilities, remind individuals of their responsibilities to each other in the country, and to encourage the pursuit of their dreams. So. Um, one thing that um, this year the trustees of the American, Mary Rathbun Scholarship Fund have decided to alter the awards to be made available to the senior winners of the essay contest. We feel that this will likely inspire more interest in the contest and will provide more benefit to those who have put significant effort into these entries. The fund will have a finite duration which will be announced to the Elkhart County Republican women in the near future. So um, right now, the scholarship fund um, will make available to the ECRW SA contest winner $1,000 per year um, for the winner of the senior, of the senior uh, level. The $1,000 award will also be given retroactively to the our first two winners Henry Imperial and Rebecca Sewell. So with that, <coughs> I guess I'm supposed to. Yes. Um, <laughs>